All right, so I want to go through this first uh, free response question. Uh, this is from the 2016 AP exam. And the scenario is you basically have a, a pool that is being filled up from a hose and um, working through that idea. All right, so uh, first off, calculate the total pressure exerted downward on the bottom of the pool after the water has been running for three hours. So here's what we have to do. We have to understand what's the volume uh, in there. And so the idea is if we have a hose, right? If we have a hose where water is traveling in this direction, if the water comes out at two meters per second, that means that if this is the very end of the hose here, right, the water here, which is a length of two meters, all of this water comes out every second. So we can find that volume then by if I know the area of my hose and then I know this length here, right, that's my volume. Okay, so area time this length is my volume. So basically what we can determine is what I call the volume flow, not velocity flow, but volume throw, which is basically the volume per second or per amount of time. So if I take the area, um, what did, area times height, okay, so area times height, that's my volume. Um, and so down here, I'm gonna figure out, okay, if I wanna know the total pressure exerted downwards, I know pressure is atmospheric pressure plus the pressure of my liquid. Pressure of my liquid is rho g h, so I need to find height. Okay. To do that, if I know the volume and my area, I can find my height. The area of my pool is 800 meters squared, 8 times 10. So then how do I find my height? Well, I need to find the volume then of water that's in there. So to find the volume of water, I'm going to take the velocity that the water is times the area in the hose. That's here, and that's going to break down basically to... Uh, a certain amount of volume per second, which then I converted that over to three hours because I have uh, 3,600 seconds in one hour. And I got a total volume of 61 meters cubed of water in my pool after three hours. With that, then I can discover my height here. Once I have my uh, height, then I can plug it into this equation. Here's my atmospheric pressure. My additional water pressure then would be the density of the water times gravity times the height of the water in the pool, uh, which I got 1.08 times 10 to the fifth Pascals. So uh, really not a ton of additional pressure, or this actually I, I did, I used 1 times 10 to the fifth instead of 1.01. .01, so this should probably be 1.09 times 10 to the fifth Pascal. So not a ton of additional pressure due to the water, um, but definitely some in there. Second part then says a small ball is floating in the water as the pool fills. Indicate whether the buoyant force on the floating ball increases, decreases, or stays the same as the amount of water in the pool increases. So briefly explain your reasoning. So basically, uh, I'm going to say that the buoyant force stays the same. For the most part, when we have something that is floating in water, right, if this is my object floating in water, as the depth of the water increases, right, uh, the buoyant force would stay the same because the only volume that it worries about is the volume that is submerged. And so it doesn't matter how deep the water is. If this is just the volume that is submerged here, this red portion, then my buoyant force on it would stay the same. Second part of the question asks, a person gets impatient, is taking too long to fill the pool. Person attaches the nozzle at the end, reduces the radius of the opening to 1.5 centimeters, right? So person claims that the water now coming out of the nozzle faster and it did before and therefore the pool will fill faster. Do you agree that the pool will fill faster? And I said, no, 
um, and we can take the idea that a e times v equals a times v. And this is basically proving, or this is discussing the idea of the volume flow rate, okay? Um, even though the velocity is faster, remember volume is area times the velocity. So even though my velocity might be faster, the total volume which comes out of the hose is not changing at all. So we're going to disagree with this statement. Second thing, calculate the speed of the water as it leaves the nozzle. Explain how your calculation is consistent with the conservation principles used in part C1. So A1 times V1 equals A2 times V2. So I got a new velocity of 8, whereas before it was moving uh, slower. Uh, how is this consistent? So the area times the velocity will equal my volume. And so uh, even though it is moving faster, it is not actually going to be going any uh, additional volume would not be coming out in the same amounts of time. Conservation principles, we could talk about, you know, pressure one plus one half rho v squared has to equal pressure two plus one half rho v squared. So in this case, um, even though my velocity goes up, um, my pressure actually of the water is going to go down. And that should make sense because we talked about in the past, right? Uh, an object going from a high area here to a low area here. This is high pressure and this is low pressure, okay? High pressure pushes. There's a bigger force pushing forward than there is pushing back. It's gonna push that water faster. When the water is in the pool 1.5 meters deep, a hose is turned off. A person who is 1.8 meters tall floats in the pool. Is the net downward force exerted on the bottom of the pool less than, greater than, or the same as the before the person got in? So we're going to say it's greater. And that's the instance that this is kind of comes down to Newton's third law. And that if we have our person floating in the pool, basically what that means is if there is a buoyant force pushing up, Newton's third law also says that there is a buoyant force pushing down. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if the water pushes up on the person, the person pushes down on the water, and therefore then the water is going to push down on the bottom of the pool even more. Another way you could think about it is the idea that if that person gets into the water, that water level will rise, right? So the water level will rise. Maybe, maybe that's not a best representation, um, but the idea that maybe the water level initially was here, and now it rose some additional height delta H, okay? Well, because pressure is rho GH, if my H increases, my pressure is going to increase as well. Would your answer in part DI be different if the person was standing at the bottom of the pool? Explain your reasoning. And I said no. Extra force is just due to the person's weight because remember, buoyant force, if they're floating, right, these two forces are going to be equal. Um, so if the person is standing, that weight is also now in contact with the bottom of the pool, so the total force would still be the same. Consider the total pressure exerted on the water on the sides. Um, what's going to happen as we add that person? Basically, uh, pressure acts in all directions, right? So if we have a container, the deeper that water is, we have pressure pointing in all directions, okay? And that pressure is due to height. Oops, I meant to draw this one a little bit shorter. Okay, that pressure is due to height. So if we increase the water level here by that person getting in, these arrows are all going to increase as well.